Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee and Ink and welcome back to this episode of Printer's Corner. This is where I take your questions and I answer them a little bit more in depth. It just so happens that all the questions this week are about eco snap frames. That's because we did some videos on them and screen printers have lots of questions about these particular frames. These are basically frames where you can put the mesh on yourself in the studio. If you have a future question on another topic and you want to ask me to get me to answer it a little bit more in depth, you can just add hashtag printers corner and you can ask that in the comments or DM us and I'll try and pick that up for a future episode. Our first question about eco snap frames is from Plundering Productions and they asked, what's the weight comparison like? I have a few Sherlock's and you can tell there is a big difference in weight with a low tension screen. I think what they're calling a low tension screen is a typical static screen and that's one where the mesh is just glued on around the edge like normal. I would say that's the industry standard, that's what most people have. A Sherlock is just a branded version of an Eco Snap Frame, it's just a different brand. We actually did a weight comparison of our Eco Snap versus a standard static screen frame. So we found that the static frame is 1.3 kilograms and the Eco Snap was 2 kilograms. I'm not quite sure why you'd need to know that information. Maybe it's just a bit more clunky in the studio. The, the only way I can see that being a problem in the actual production of screens and making screens is that when you're using static frames, they're hollow aluminium frames and they actually float in the dip tank, which is quite handy actually because then they're not getting sludge and muck on them when they're just being decoated in the dip tank. So we did find that the eco snap frames didn't float and they were so heavy that they actually sunk to the bottom of the dip tank. If you had a flat bottom dip tank, they would get covered in sludge and muck and it would just be another thing to clean and get into your production. It would be a bit of a nightmare. However, we're using the easy way dip tank and that has these little kind of valleys on the bottom and that means that your screen sits on another piece of plastic and it doesn't get any sludge on it anyway. In our setup, having a heavier screen doesn't really make any difference because we've got a different type of dip tank. Uh, let me know why the weight of the screen would be a factor in screen printing because I can't really think of one off the top of my head. Our second question about EcoSnap frames is from Slim7031 and they asked, good video as always, we just purchased a tension meter to measure all of our screens. Hate to have to ditch the old ones, but I believe it's inevitable if we want to have better prints. We'll have a look into stretching our own screens as well. Question though, do you have to adjust your squeegee pressure because the mesh is so delicate? I would say that we haven't experienced that we had to lower the force that we're putting on the squeegee onto the screens because we haven't found them that more delicate really like actually in production if you're moving the screens around you have got a bit of exposed mesh on the frame and we just kind of sidestepped that problem by putting some heavy duty tape around the edge of the screen to kind of protect it a little bit but no we haven't eased off on the pressure I'm also thinking that they might have an automatic press so in that circumstance maybe they've eased off the pressure but then I'm thinking <laughs> if you have old static frames they typically hold less tension on the mesh so for that if you have a slightly saggier mesh on a low tension static screen your off contact would be higher to kind of compensate for the mesh flexing a little bit more so with these high tension screens you can probably have them lower reducing your off contact and then i would assume you'd keep the pressure the same you would just adjust the off contact that's what I probably would uh, assume is the answer to that. But no, we don't typically change the pressure that we're using. We just found crisper, nicer prints were coming off the higher tension screens. And um, it also really helps make sure that all your screens are stretched to the same tension because that just helps with registering screens a lot more quickly. 
where if you have lots of different tension meshes, it can be a bit of a nightmare. One thing I did want to mention with this is that we did jump straight into actually having the freshly stretched screen and then putting it straight on the press. That's, that's actually okay if you're doing like single color artwork that you don't need like miss registration. But if I was to try and advise people when they've just stretched their screen, give it a few hours as recommended. And that just allows the mesh to kind of settle out and get to the tension that it's going to be in the long term. Maybe even overnight, let the mesh settle overnight. So then you're going to get more consistent results when you're printing. Our final question in today's episode about eco snap frames is quite a funny one. It's from The Performing Ham. And they've asked on one of our YouTube videos, how did you get the mesh back off? I bought a set using the code and meshed up easy enough, but now I've realized I have no idea how to get it, them back off. I feel like I'm in the crystal maze shouting, I can't see what I've got to do. I definitely agree with you. It is, it's tricky to know what to do, but then when you know, it's really, really like overly simple. In this particular YouTube video, we're showing how to put the mesh onto the frames and you have to use this really weird tool that it comes with. It's like this and it even like has a bit of a hinge to it. So when we're showing how to put the mesh on, I actually didn't show in the video how to take it off. So apologies for that. But when you put it on, you can put this bottom groove in, put this onto a little ridge and then you can assemble it. And then when it comes to taking the mesh off, once you don't need it anymore, you've ripped it or it's just worn or something, you actually use this very, very top profile edge here. So you hold the, I'm going to call it a tool like this, and it's got like this edge that rounds off and then it goes relatively sharp. You literally just put it in a groove and then pull it back as if you're tightening it and then it just jumps off and then you can quite easily go around the whole screen and it gets easier and easier to take the sides off and there you go. You've got your mesh panel off and you didn't have to stab it and rip it off like how you'd probably want to if you can't figure that out. That's, that's the reason we actually made the video because the assembly instructions were quite tricky to see which way around you're holding the tool and which groove you're putting this tool into. And it also is quite scary to do on your own. So I'd get someone else to hold the screen down for you because it feels like the mesh is just going to pop back in your face. But it doesn't, it's actually very easy and it's really quick to put your own mesh on your screens now. Hopefully that's answered the question of how to take the bloody mesh off. In general, the main question about these kind of videos was, are eco snaps worth the hype one year on? In our particular studio, I think they are, and we would even invest in even more of them if they had different mesh ranges in between. So in our studio, we typically like to go for a 55T mesh. That's like our go-to for the type of artwork that we tend to be doing with these vector, like high vivid, really nice colored artworks using plaster link on like hoodies and things. But the mesh that the Eco Snaps come with with our current supplier doesn't come in 55. So we would have invested a lot more in these and had them as our exclusive screen by now. But uh, we're kind of waiting for that mesh type to come in. So we've only really got a few hundred and tens, uh, which are 43 Ts. We've got some 62 Ts and we've even got some 90s and some even more like specialist ones. I think they are worth the hype. Having a really high tension screen to hand is, is really, really useful. They work in our dip tank. I can see a lot of our peers in the screen print industry are adapting to these eco snap frames. So yeah, I think they are worth the hype one year on. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know in the comments anything you agree with. If you don't think eco snaps are worth the hype, or if you found that they've been a real game changer for your studio, let us know in the comments and give us any future questions using hashtag printers corner and I'll get on those for next week's episode.